Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to show you how to set up or start a photo book project in Adobe InDesign. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. So as you know, I make quite a lot of photo books in Adobe InDesign or Affinity Publisher, a very similar software. And the reason for that is because there is an unlimited set of options, lots of tools to use, and there are no restrictions that you might find in some photo book editors. Of course, it's an offline software, so you can use it anytime on your computer without being logged into your photo book editor. And all you have to do in the very end is export your photo book as a PDF and find the photo book company that prints from PDF and get your photo book printed. Now in this video, I'm going to show you four separate ways of starting or setting up a project. The first one is going to be by using a plugin. Some photo books, well, very few, uh, provide a plugin for Adobe InDesign that you can download from their website and that's going to allow you to select the photo book in Adobe InDesign and it automatically creates a photo book template for you. The second option I'm going to show you is when a company doesn't have a plugin, but they provide templates for Adobe InDesign. The third option is when there is no plugin and there is no template, but the photo book company provides you with specifications or requirements regarding size and measurements. In this case, it's going to be a little bit harder. You have to set up the project yourself based on the requirements and specifications on the photo book company's website. The fourth option I'm going to show you is the least conventional, but I've done it before and it does work, is when there is no template, no plugin and no requirements because the company doesn't accept any PDF to photo book uh, printing and there is no uh, Adobe InDesign plugin. So what can you do in this case? In this case, you can create a project yourself in Adobe InDesign that matches the photo book size as closely as possible. And in the very end, instead of exporting it as a PDF, you're going to export every single page as a JPEG, import this picture into the photo book company's editor, and this way you can create a photo book in Adobe InDesign and get it printed by a company that does not provide or support Adobe InDesign in their platform. So once again, in this video, all I'm going to show you is how to set up the document, how to start the project, the template. I'm not going to show you how I design my photo books. That's going to be my next video. In that video, I'm going to show you design tips and how to place photos on layouts and how to create master pages. But in this video, I just want to show you how to create that document, how to make sure that the specifications of your document are going to be a good match for the photo book company's requirements. So let's dive in. So let's start with the first option, the plugin option. This one is by far the easiest to set up because it does everything automatically, but I don't think that actually any other company apart from Blurb offers a plugin for Adobe InDesign, but correct me if I'm wrong. So what you need to do is come to the Blurb website and come to the design tools and here go to Adobe InDesign. And you have to download the Adobe plugin. And before you start the app, you have to install it. So it's very important to install it before you start the app. So once you download it and install it, then you go to InDesign and all you need to do is click on file. And in the bottom, you'll see two options now. One is the Blurb Book Creator and the Blurb Wall Art Creator. If you click on the Blurb Book Creator, the first thing you have to do, it's very straightforward. Step one, start a project. So create a new book. You have to give it a title, author, and you have to select book size. You can see the standard books, the lay flat books, magazines, trade books, and so on. So let's select large square 12 by 12 lay flat, and you have to select an available paper type for this book. So you're basically doing everything inside InDesign without doing anything on the Blurb website. Then you have to select your cover type uh, for this specific book. It's only hardcover image wrap available. And you can, of course, give an ISBN number to your book if you want to sell it later on. When you finish filling in step two, the book details, you have to come to the document files. And this is the important part. So there are two kinds of files that you have to create. One is for the inside pages which are all going to be the same. And you have to create this template first. 
and then you have to create your cover template only when you've finished editing the inside of the book. The reason why this is very important is because the cover template, the size of the cover template is going to depend on how many pages you have inside your book. So if you have a cover design for a 20 page book, it's going to be smaller than the cover design for a book that's 100 pages long. So first thing we have to do is create the page templates. And you basically have to select where it's going to put these um, documents and you have to give a name for it. So I'm going to call it inside pages. And there we go. So the inside pages are already created. And let's assume that I only want 20 pages in my book so I can create my cover template as well. And there we go. It says here, be sure you are finished with the pages design and you have confirmed the final page count before you create the cover. So just what I told you. And let's put here cover. And that's my cover design ready as well. Now in the bottom here where you see step four order book, you can see the type, the logo and the price quantity. So you can set these once the book is ready. Now here you see the two tabs. One is for the inside pages, the other one is for the cover. So both of them are opened. With the inside pages, it's showing you the book type and then here is your setup book template. Now, all you need to know about this, it's very self-explanatory that you've got basically three markers. The red one is the bleed, the black one is the edge of the document and the magenta one is the margins. The margins in the blurb books are really small. I would usually create a much bigger one if I created my template from scratch at least a centimeter, but usually an inch for me, but they probably want to maximize available space. So everything inside the page trim line, so which is white and gray, is going to be printed. And in between the white area and the red line is going to be your bleed. So that's going to be chopped off or areas of it, sections of it are going to be chopped off when the book is printed. The only purpose of this area is if you want full bleed photos or a page covered completely by a photo. In that case, you have to ensure that the photo is enlarged or extended all the way to the edges of the red mark or the red line, because otherwise you might end up with little bits of white edges on the photo or in the book. So that's all about these lines. Uh, you can see that the pages appear as facing pages. So that means that the bleed area only applies to the outer edges, not inside, because that's where the book is going to be bound. It says book gutter. Of course, if it's not a lay flat book, uh, quite a lot is going to get lost here. That's why there is a bigger margin. But if it's a lay flat book, then all of this is going to be printed and nothing is going to get lost in the middle because obviously it opens fully flat. If you come to the cover, Again, it's very straightforward. It shows everything and where things need to go. What's the area that you need to fill? So it's the same story. If it's a full bleed photo, you have to make sure that it extends all the way to the red line all around and nothing important should be outside the gray square. This is your spine text here. And these are the hinge creases. So when the book obviously folds the cover, you don't want to put any text there because it's going to be creased anyway. Now, this video is not really about exporting, but I'm going to show you that too. So when you're done with the design, all you have to do is come to file and export. Now here you have to select again your um, destination folders to documents and inside pages, and you have to select Adobe PDF print. So you always have to go with the PDF version and the print version means that it's a high quality uh, PDF. There's no downscaling and it's not going to be for web viewing, it's for printing. So click save and then here is your main export PDF panel. There's so many things here that you can set, but actually you don't need to touch any of these. The most important thing is here which is the pages and you can select the export as a page or spreads. Now, when you create a lay flat book, you always have to export it as a spread. So the two sheets are together. Otherwise, there's going to be a break inside uh, the book in the middle between the two pages. If your book is not lay flat, it's a perfect bound book, then you're going to select pages. And in that case, the left side is going to be separated from the right side and it's going to be a different page in the PDF document. 
The rest of the settings here are all good to go, so you don't have to do anything there. The compression is set to 300 pixels per inch, which is the standard, so again, nothing to change there. And if you come to the marks and bleed, the important thing is to always have the use document bleed settings ticked. None of the print marks need to be checked and the slug area is not really important. So make sure that the document bleed setting is always ticked so it's using the one set up in the original document. So all you need to do is select export and when your file is ready, you can upload it to the blurb website and get it ready for printing. Option number two is when a company doesn't have a plugin, but they do provide you with a template that you can use. Quite a few companies offer this option like Flipchap, Sal Digital, Presto Photo, and I think Bob Books as well. So what you have to do, I'm going to show it on the Flipchap website. You scroll down to the bottom and here you'll find upload and print. So you have to select this option. And here is going to give you a little bit of a tutorial on how to do this. And underneath you can select from uh, Adobe InDesign templates and Photoshop templates. You obviously have to click on the InDesign templates and here you have to select your book type. So you have hardcover books and lay flat books. Again, let's go for the lay flat book, click on next. Here you have to select between a printed cover or a material cover. If it's a material cover, obviously you don't have to edit it, but if it's a printed cover, you have to create it yourself. Next one is the book size. So let's select eight by 11 inches landscape and then go onto the download button. When it downloaded, it's going to be a zip file. So you have to double click to open it. And here you see quite a lot of help and guidance. So the first file is going to show you what things mean and how to export. The second file is going to show you again the areas and the lines that we already talked about in option one. Uh, the third one is again showing you embedding options and the last one is showing you the printing of the main cover and how it's going to look on the spine and what the different sections are for. And here we've got our InDesign templates. So we've got the inlay pages for eight by 11 inches and we've got the cover template, which is for 20 pages. So let's click on the inlay pages first. Now here again, you can already see that this, the whole thing is set up for you with all the guidelines and the right sizes for the specific book. Now, if you look at one of these double pages, again, you can see that it's a lay flat book, so there is no bleed in the middle, but there's a divider line just to show you where the book is going to fold. You've got your uh, bleed line, you've got the slug lines, you've got the main area and you've got your margins. So the same story as with blurb, you have to make sure that if you use any full bleed images, so an image covering a full page or going right up to the edge of the paper, you have to extend it all the way to the red line in each direction. Any text should be inside the magenta line, so in this area, and there should be no text between the edge of the paper and the magenta line. If you want to export this, again, you have to go to File, Export, and it's going to be the exact same setting as I showed you in the first section. The second file is the cover file. And again, it's optimized for 20 pages. You can again see where the book is going to crease between these two lines here and on the left side. This is where you would put your spine text and you can design any side, left or right side of the printed cover. Option three is going to be when you have to manually set up the project to match certain requirements of a photo book company. So again, most companies who accept PDFs for printing are going to provide some kind of requirements or specifications for the file size. I'm going to show you the one from Blurb. So if you again come to the Blurb website and you come to the design tools, you can come to PDF to book. Here you can get specifications for everyday applications or the plugin, which I already showed you. So let's assume that it's a different company which doesn't have a plugin. So if you come to the specifications, what you need to do first of all is select a book type. So if we select standard landscape 10 by eight inches and click on specifications, 
you have to select a cover type. It's going to be 40 pages. Units of measurement are very important. I prefer centimeters, but of course, if you're in the United States, you can use inches. You have to click on get measurements. And here again, it's showing you the different kind of lines, what they mean. You can read through that, but I already explained in option one. And here are the important things. So first of all, it's showing you the page specifications here and it's showing you in centimeters. Now you have here, the first thing is the final exported PDF should measure width times height. So this is going to be your final document, but the way InDesign works is the bleed is added onto the final document size. So when we set up the document, we don't actually use this number. You're going to start with the page size, which is without the bleed, so the trim line. You come to InDesign, and you go file new document. Now you're going to give it a name. So let's put there test. And then you're going to select your unit of measurement. In this case, you have to select centimeters. And then all you can do is just uh, basically copy and paste. So that's my width. And I'm going to copy it, command C, paste. And my height is 20.32. We don't need 10 decimal places, two is plenty. There we go. And the orientation is going to be landscape because it's a landscape photo book. And here is facing pages. And if this is not ticked, you're going to see it as a perfect bound book. So each page, each side of the book separately. But if you click on the facing pages, it's going to put your left and right side of the book uh, into one design so you can create a lay flat book. I'm going to select uh, 40 pages. And if you look here in the bottom, we've got margins, we've got bleed and slug and something very interesting happens. So if I have the facing pages ticked, then I see margins top, bottom, inside and outside. But if I unclick the facing pages, it becomes left and right. The reason for that is that when you have a lay flat book, the two sides are going to become one. So you don't actually need a margin or um, a bleed in between the two pages or the two sides. But when it's a perfect bound book, you need the bleed and the margins on each side of the paper. So let's go and select back again, facing pages and we have to fill in, first of all, the margins area. So if you come back to the blurb website, it says the margins should be top, bottom and outside edge 0.635 centimeters. So copy top, bottom and outside. Now the inside has to be zero because there is nothing in the inside. Then we go on to the bleed section and check the bleed settings. It says again, top, bottom and outside edges 0.317 centimeters. So copy and paste top, bottom, and we don't need anything on the inside. So I have to unclick this little, make all the settings the same and make it zero in the inside. And that's our document set up. So now I have to go on create. You can see that it starts on the right hand side and then it's double pages. Now here again, it's the same story. You've got the red line, which is your bleed line. You've got the document and you've got your safety margin. So text should always be inside the magenta line. If you come back to the blurb website, again, the second section is going to be about the cover. Now, again, it's very important to do this after you've finished editing the inside of the book, because this one is optimized for 40 pages. If you end up with 52 pages because you added some more photos, then you have to redo this um, customization page to make sure that it fits 52 pages. The inside pages are not going to change, but the cover specifications are going to be different. It's going to be slightly bigger. When you set up the cover specifications, you go through the exact same steps I showed you for the inside pages, but you're going to use these measurements from here. So the fourth option is when you don't have a template, you don't have a plugin and you don't have any specifications, but you still want to use 
Adobe InDesign to create your photo book. What can you do? Now, there is a solution that I've tried before and it did work, but it's not bulletproof and it's not an official method. So just take it with a pinch of salt. Now, what you can do is you go to your photo book company's website. So in this case, I'm going to go to Mixbook because they don't offer any PDF printing and they don't offer any Adobe InDesign specifications. So first of all, you have to select the photo book that you want to create. So let's have a look at the sizes. I'm going to select 10 by 10 inches. So all I need to do now is go into Adobe InDesign and go to File, New Document and I'm going to name this mixed book and I'm going to select here inches, 10 inches, 10 inches and 40 pages. That doesn't really matter. And now with the margins, I'm going to set a slightly bigger margin because obviously I don't have the specifications of the bleed and trim of the company. So I want to make sure that nothing is going to get chopped off. So I would set it to one inch one inch in the bottom and one inch on the outside. And again, if it's a lay flat book, you would leave the inside zero. If it's a perfect bound book, you're going to set the inside to maybe 1.5 because that's where the book is going to be bound. So the inside margin should always be at least half an inch bigger than the rest of them. Now, when I come to my bleed, Although there is no bleed setting, the industry standard is going to be a 0.125 inches or around three millimeters. So if you go with this, most companies are going to use something around this uh, value. So I'm going to set it to 0.125, bottom the same, outside the same. And again, I'm going to leave the inside zero because I'm making a lay flat book. Again, facing pages is going to be set and create. And there we go. Here is my book. And now you can see that the margin is much bigger. But of course, you can put your photos outside the margin. But if you use any kind of text, I would use it inside the margins. And you can create the book the exact same way as I showed it to you in options one, two and three. You can add more pages. And the only difference is going to be that when you export your project, you're going to click on file export and this time we are going to create jpegs and this is very important so i'm going to click on jpeg and save in the export section you're going to select all and then instead of the pages if you're making a lay flat book you're going to select spreads if you're creating a perfect bound book you're going to select pages so since this one is a lay flat book i'm going to go with the spreads quality i'm going to set it to high but you can make it maximum it doesn't really matter high or maximum are both really good and the resolution i'm going to set it to 300 dpi very important it's again the industry standard and the color space should be rgb when you create photo books because the company is going to transform it into cmyk or whatever they use in their printing process embed the color profile and export and now if you come to the destination folder, which is documents for me, you can see that instead of having one PDF document with all the pages, I have now separate JPEG files for every single spread. And what you have to do is you go into your Mixbook editor. There we go. And now we're going to add from desktop. So you're going to go to your um, destination folder, just select your pages. Obviously they're all white because I haven't put anything on them. Choose for upload. And if you go to your main page, you're just going to get rid of all of these um, placeholders. Remove, remove, remove. And if you go to your photos, you should see, obviously they're all white, so it's difficult to see, but if this is your double page spread, you're going to put it here. And when you click on it, you're going to select fill page. And now it fills the entire page and you're going to stretch it all the way across the two pages and click on the span. So this is going to show your image on both sides. And this way you manage to create a design in InDesign, put it into Mixbook in a JPEG format. And you can do this for every single double page spread. And when you're done, the only thing you have to do inside the app is make your cover design and uh, create it here. Of course, you can design it in InDesign, but it's going to be harder because the bleeds are a bit more tricky when it comes to your cover design. 
So this is my solution basically for creating an InDesign book and still printing it with a company that doesn't offer any kind of um, PDF printing. Thank you very much for watching and as always subscribe for more.